choosing amongst themselves what to target and uh, where to target a particular uh, target. Um, it probably doesn't matter to you whether it's a, a general taking responsibility for it or whether, you know, at some point in the line of drug artificial sexuality. into this because the movements of the vibrator are echoed and, and simulated in the movements of the flashlight. So this might look like with uh, autonomous vehicles. Uh, so one of the things I, I guess is they'll have to have really opaque windows if you want to be riding in one of these. So the premise here is that accidents will happen, right? Or raised $150 million. Things quickly went south though. Um, just about a month or so later, Someone found a bug in the code. They exploited a kind of loophole in the contract, and they were able to drain about $60 million worth of value from the Dow. thinking about, okay, like, uh, how, how would one really commute, compute everything about everything? And that, that was in about 1980, and at first I thought I sort of had to build something like a brain to be able to do that, and I started studying neural nets and so on, but I didn't, didn't get very far. Meanwhile, I kind of got interested in an even bigger problem in science, sort of how to make the most general possible theories of anything. The issue is, is it intelligence that we recognize as being human-like intelligence? And that's really a question of exactly how we kind of, uh, how we imprint kind of human-like things on this computation that we, in a sense, already have. It was, you know, H.L.A. Hart talked about rules that said cars should not be rot driven in the park, and then somebody has a toy car. Well, there's obviously the intent of the law is, by, is not captured by the rule. And we understand that, and is there something comparable? That's interesting. Okay, interesting question. So, so I mean, I think, uh, well, first of all, about free will, um, I'm not a professional philosopher. I decided not to do that when I was five years old or something. So I can't debate all the, all the details of, of, uh, of how philosophers talk about free will, although there's, there's a lot more that I could say than the few sentences I just said. Um, in terms of, of sort of the intent, the principle, as opposed to the letter of what's going on, in a sense, what I'm what one does when one sets things up computationally, when one talks about symbolic systems and so on, is one's trying to grind out all of those sort of humanistic types of things and sort of desiccate everything to the point where it is just a bunch of symbols and where there is something definite that can be said. Now, if you ask the question, is there, can there be more general principles? In other words, you've got some particular set of rules, let's say, is there a more general principle at work? Let me give you an analogy, okay? In mathematics. So in mathematics, there is, uh, in a sense, there's a, we can prove that there's sort of an infinite frontier to mathematics. You will, you will prove certain theorems, but there will always be more theorems to prove. There will always be more, in a sense, principles to discover. You'll never reach the edge of, of the principles that there are to discover. In fact, it's sort of a consequence of this computational irreducibility idea that there will always be, that there will always be more to discover. So, so I'll give you an example. Let's say we're, we're looking in, at physics, at the universe. What can we build in the universe? Can we build a spaceship with warp drive, something like this? It, we may be able to just straight answer that question, but there's no guarantee, it's kind of an undecidability type thing, there's no guarantee that given the building blocks that we have in the universe, there may be no sort of finite way to decide whether we can build a spaceship that will support warp drive. And it's the same type of thing, I think, with this, this question about, and you're asking about, you know, can there be a deeper principle? Can one discover a deeper principle? I think a consequence of this principle of, computa the, of, um, the, of principle of computational equivalence and computational irreducibility, I think a consequence is there will always be deeper principles. Can one get to the point where 
where one, there will never be a, 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 an ultimate principle or a, or a lowest principle, but there will always be more that can be discovered, like in mathematics. It, you won't reach the edge where you just say, now we understand everything. We've got the complete set of rules where we've got everything nailed down. There will always be more that can be discovered. Um, it's an interesting question, and there's probably probably more that I'm, that I'm not. Uh, just one more comment about this, okay? The, the, um, the, the thing that happens, um, for example, when you look at the output from an automated theorem proving system, um, you can establish that something is true, but what you see is a bunch of little sort of atoms of, of fact there. Um, it is not something that humans can relate to because there are no sort of waypoints that are, you know, Smith's theorem, Jones's theorem, that everybody knows what they are. They're no kind of, they're no kind of things, concepts that have emerged that we understand. And I think when you talk about principles, I think in part what you're maybe talking about is these kinds of things that have emerged as culturally known things to us that, um, and, I, and I think one of the things that happens in this sort of computational world is that you get all these little bits of computation and the question of whether we can understand parts of that in some, in some way where we can talk about them is a, is a different and sort of more, it's, it's, it's more a question about human history than it is about the raw computation. Great, okay. let's thank you. Yes. Day in that particular context, so they have to have some sort of emotional intelligence and they have to be able to interact with us in a very natural way. So, real time dialogue, interaction, natural language, and pro processing, and so on. So, this is the desiderata, I think, of a human AI collaborative system. As doctors, or perhaps in social decision making, um, helping us to gain, share, and use knowledge and experience. The task of self-preservation, Hobbes points out, we get something that takes some of the shape of morality. And as we enter autonomously into relations with these systems, systems capable of learning from experience to become better at such interaction, we could see perhaps how behaving intelligently in such situations could involve the formation of social relations that bear many of the hallmarks of morality. See, that would kind of be a bit silly. Right? I mean, that's not how human ant relations have evolved over time. Um, so, so that's a, sort of one point. Um, <laughs>Okay, so my phone's almost dead, so I gotta be kind of brief with my comments, but today was awesome. Uh, met Tim Urban, Jan LeCun, Nick Bostrom, got to hang out and ask questions with a bunch of cool people. It was just a good time. It was just a really, like, totally fascinating time. Uh, and met one of the journalists who's embedded with SpaceX and got invited to a rocket launch. So, wearing a SpaceX logo on your body does good things. Uh, anyway, I, yeah, that was my day, so I'll talk to you about it more later. In the meantime, though, Washington Square Park, right? Isn't this cool?